Hello, welcome to the podcast. Hello. Today we're going to cover Ghoulies 4. I got it on DVD. <laughs> Can you hold it up a little closer? I can't see. Ghoulies I, 4. Yeah. And yeah, it's because <laughs> all the light from my computer you can't make out shit. And it's going to be awesome. So, yeah. Yeah, can't wait. It's w- much this. much better than 3. 3 got too, got too bogged down in social commentary. Have you seen Ghoulies 4? Uh, no, I have not seen any of the. You can see it pretty good. It can't be much worse than the Love Guru. (laughs) Oh, it's probably better than the Love Guru. Yeah, um, but we're gonna talk about something actually good first. (laughs) Before the Love Guru, which is like your background there. Hey Cam, are you in the mood for love? Uh, you bet. I you know, it, for love. It, yeah, we're starting off the summer of love with two love movies. It's like, uh, I, I, to be honest, like, you know, I was expecting something different based on the title. Yeah, you know, I, I was expecting more like a steamy romance, and that's not really what the movie is. It's much oh, more yeah, it's understated. Um, uh huh. Distant. Yeah. Do they ever, like, kiss? Uh, I don't think so. Not that no. I recall. <laughs> I know they, like, hold hands at one point. Or whatever, kind you know, of. He, it's directed by Wong Kar Wai. This is the first film I've seen from him, but he's also well known for the film Chung King Express, which we might also talk about on the podcast at some point. These two people, they live next to each other in this apartment, and they're married, both of them, but they find out their respective partners, because they're, they're always away on business trips. Spouses, yeah. Cheating on them with each with other with each yeah. other, basically. Yeah. So they decide to, I guess, reenact how their partner started the affair just for fun that's part of it uh, <laughs> yeah. for fun i think also for you know kind of catharsis in a way right what, what's interesting too is um or like yeah intriguing is that you never really see the other like their respective you know husband and wife they're they're, they're always like off camera or like i think you know the you know the guy's wife you, you only see like her back you don't you never see mm-hmm. her face which is you know obviously a conscious choice you can't really like you don't really have a grasp on who, who they are, really. It's kind right. of it. Or, you, you know, like, you know, glean, you know, information. Well, neither do the characters. Right. Their right. characters are like, those part, their partners are very out of their lives. They're always away. And they're having this, like, they, they feel like they don't really, like, know them. There's this distance. And, and so that is, like, a very smart choice. Yeah. There's an element of the movie's writing that, you know, they like putting on performances and fictionalizing in a way. Like, they start later on writing, he says he wants to write his martial arts serial. Yeah, like right? a comic they, strip. Yeah, they, yeah. So, like, that that makes sense, like, why they also like doing the reenactment of, like, the affair or whatever. <laughs> it's not completely out of character. And it's, right, a way of coping also for, right, that they're, because they're upset <laughs> that their yeah, partners yeah. are gone. And, it, and yeah, captured that seemed- pretty well. Yeah, I agree. You're right. That that is a key part of you know his, the, the you know the man's uh, character. He loves you know writing. You know he's creative. I think he works at like a newspaper office. Yeah, isn't that something yeah. like that? And uh, the woman, you know, she's always like very fashionable. It seems you know she's into you know her, dressing her well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her dresses, her are, hair is yeah. always done up. Uh-huh. Very colorful. I liked her dresses in the movie, and they were it was cool for showing the passage of time as well. Like, you knew when it was a new day or time had passed because she was in a new dress. Yeah, the, the movie just looked beautiful, I thought. Yeah. Like, great cinematography, great lighting, use of color, and I like the little slow looking. motion moments. Like, you know, there's, like, a couple moments of, like, like when it's in the rain and there's, like, the slow motion or whatever. Um, I like those little moments there. And it's just the music. I like the music as well. Que sus, que sus, que sus. <laughs> I yeah, like- I think it's like a, I read it, it's, it's like a Nat King Cole instrumental or something. That, oh, yeah. I don't know if that's like the motif that, you know, repeats over and over. Yeah. There were certain parts of the movie, like certain, uh, like, scenes or like kind of like beats of dialogue are repeated multiple times. It might be a bit like something like Persona. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you know, you're meant to like, you know, it, it's repeated for a reason, like certain, you know, exchanges of dialogue. Yeah. You know, it's intentional. You know, kind of like that moment behind you. In the yeah. movie, where they kind of like walk past each other on the staircase a few times, mm-hmm. like before they know much about each other. Yeah, it's like what they're going for. She's going to grab noodles. noodles it's like a, yeah. I don't know if it's like a market kind of. That's that's where they're coming out of on the stairs there. Uh huh. Something like that. Or uh-huh. cafe. 
Mm-hmm. It's set in Hong Kong in the in the sixties. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, it's pretty like it goes over a few years also. Like it jumps yeah. a lot, around a lot toward the end. Um, mm-hmm. very like cynical sort of ending as well. Like as far as a romantic kind of movie, you know, you can have a happy ending or a sad ending. But I like the more. Um, it felt more believable and realistic the way it ended, which I I respected that choice. A lot. Yeah, I, yeah. I like is, the way it concludes. Yeah, it is kind of yeah. like a classic example of that you know love that can never be, and um, that's yeah. why I, I I think a movie like this definitely benefits from being you know watched again because obviously this is the first time either of us has seen it. Oh yeah, because like the narrative, it is kind of like inscrutable at times. I think like deliberately so. Like you know, their parts were like you know, sure, I can see like that characters speaking off screen like it's, it's not like immediately clear like who's you know talking to whom kind of thing yeah some like jarring moments of with like the editing and so on but yeah i, I you know it didn't really bother me so much no I, no it, I, yeah. i'm just saying like in terms of like you know I, i'm not saying like this movie is like a big puzzle that needs to be solved it's just like, <laughs> no. you know you know sometimes you know it just it, it's, it's kind of like throws you throw off on. yeah it's there's a lot to dissect with this film yeah yeah it's the first time i like i literally just watched it so mm-hmm. for me to like dissect all the meaning of it is like very hard on my first watch where, yeah, it, it, there is a lot of like nuance to it. And, mm-hmm. and yeah, if it's a movie like we'd seen, we've seen them many times, like, uh, I don't know, like Eternal Sunshine or something like that's easy because yeah. we've seen it so many times and we're so familiar with it. But yeah, like we literally just turned this on. It's it's hard, like you don't have the context for it as well because foreign film and. You know, I, I want to look more into the background of it as well. But, I, you know, I thought it was well made. I enjoyed watching oh, it yeah, for yeah. sure. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, the cinematography. And it, this is uh, the first movie we've seen from Wong Kai Wei. Because I know, I think somebody uh, suggested we, we cover, you know, one of his movies. I know he also did Chunking Express, which maybe we'll get to another time. Um but yeah, I'm definitely curious to see more of his work. I know this is part of the Criterion Collection. You can see why. There's, you know, it's very... Um, you know, uh, mysterious in a way, and also, yeah, very artful. Like, you know, it's, a, it's definitely something you can dissect. Something for the, yeah, the fancy art crowd. They would like it because it looks so great and so well made and like mm-hmm. stylistic. And yeah, it's very short too, which I like. 98 minutes mm-hmm. doesn't overstate its welcome at all. Um, yeah. And doesn't feel too fast paced either. It's like pretty perfectly paced. Yeah, it's it's almost it's sort of like episodic in a way. The yeah, you know, how they gradually you know, the two of them you know because they you know have you know padding exchanges like in the hallway. You know, the, like the tenement building where they live. It's not very not very private setting. Like you know the whatever you call it, the landladies. Like they're always like up. They're oh, always you up know, their you should join us. about everything. Yeah, 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 you should join Especially us. Especially her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they can't be seen together hanging mm-hmm. out. That's a big part of the movie. Right. Because right, as far like, as everyone else door. knows, they're married yeah. and they don't know like the. Their partners having affairs and so on, so they have to keep up this facade, right? Mm-hmm. Um, which is also that's why they have to have this distance. Um, uh, like I love that scene where they're like they have to hang out in his room because like you know they're having a poker game outside, so he has to yeah you know, yeah. They gotta be but discreet. like they spend a lot of time together in in the room, mm-hmm. like so it's it's like good bonding for those two characters, I guess as well. Like the secrecy is very like. It makes it very intimate, also. Um, yeah, yeah, they're into me. Sorry, their intimacy. <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah, it's not represented like so much in a physical way, at least not like in a traditional sense. You know, it's kind of based on their um, kind, you know, their kindred spirits, sort of. Mm-hmm. Like La La Land, kind of wasn't meant to be. Sure. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I definitely enjoyed it. Um, I'd give it like a four star if I had to rate it or something like that. <laughs> I, I might yeah, even raise it upon seeing it again. Sure, yeah. I think yeah. I'll hold off on the rating for now. I definitely yeah, enjoyed fun, it, but, like, but yeah. yeah. I know I like on Letterbox, it's like, you know, five stars, five stars. You know, which is fun. It's yeah, pretty it's, high, it's cool. but it's definitely yeah. a good movie. Like, no, 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 I, no, was I agree. Not, I, like, yeah. I wasn't like, oh, that was overrated or whatever. Like, I no, definitely no, no, enjoyed I, it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm not saying like, oh, you're yeah. fucking idiots. It sucks. It's, like, <laughs> no, no. it's just like, oh, like I obviously that, that's why I like sometimes reading reviews, you know, hearing other people's opinions because sometimes, you know, it's just maybe I was in a bad mood when I watched something. Not that I was when I was watching this, but sometimes, you know, you know, uh, it's be- beneficial to have other people's input and because yeah. obviously th- this movie is very highly regarded. So yeah, it's definitely something I want to return to and yeah, because I I know it's like 
yeah, ranked highly on the letterbox like list, which I've never looked at the full list because it would probably annoy me. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is definitely- yeah, there's a lot of bullshit on there. Like I know what's it? I think Life is Beautiful. Like that's in the top 100. That's not. I don't think that's one of the 100 greatest movies. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's fine if people Cam, disagree. You're get <laughs> no, but shit on. Like, no, no, I, yeah, it's just like. <laughs> no, I, I don't give a shit. Um, but like, yeah, this is definitely good. People. Right, uh, uh, yeah. you can get like a hundred thousand yeah. dislikes now. Yeah, your it's channel went group. downhill after horse. Your horse of the dragon opinion, Ralph. That's what the mm-hmm. comment said. Yeah. But wow, yeah, this video have, got three views in one second. Fell off, just like that. And um, yeah, um, like you said, it might yeah, my rating might raise to it. Yeah, I I I, I enjoy movies like this that have a keen sense of you know setting and yeah, it's just kind of like a quiet story about you know people. Yeah, yeah, very right, subdued, not plot heavy or whatever. Because no, I just yeah, watched like really Parallax is, yeah. View or whatever, which is great, mm-hmm. but that's like fucking very plot heavy and crazy. Sure, <laughs> yeah. People trying yeah. to kill each other. This is like way more like okay, a great movie in its own way. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that one, that movie's fucking awesome for sure. You should watch Parallax View if you mm-hmm. haven't viewer. Yeah. Um, you, you want to move on to the the bad movie we're gonna talk about about love oh. in the summer? Oh, of you love. mean you mean the Love Guru? That's not the one in the Criterion Collection. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it starts with the C. <laughs> right, then, uh, that, would, that would be funny actually um, then it watches, that's better than anything yeah. in this movie again uh, so I don't have off? any notes for Love Guru I usually have notes believe it or not but I have no notes because it's just like one of those movies where you just gotta like speak from the soul <laughs> do, you want, do you want me to start? you can I mean we'll start with what <laughs> <laughs> so this was my suggestion I had never seen this before I know Ralph had it at, yeah, you know, when it at came some out. point <laughs> Did you see it in the theater? No, I think I saw it on DVD. Oh, good. No, yeah, no, like I, when I it think came this out. Bombed. So this was, a, you know, for a little context, Mike Myers, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with him, but, you know, he started on SNL, like, it was around, like, the early, mid-90s. He with, did like, start in know, SNL, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't Dana entirely Carvey. sure. Well, there's Wayne's World, yeah, that's an SNL movie. Yeah, it was um, produced by Lauren Michaels. Yeah, that was and, his and first And Austin Powers, movie. of course, that's, like, his, yeah. probably his biggest accomplishment, I'd say. <laughs> As far as yeah. films, sure, yeah. I mean, those those were yeah you know, the, the the Wayne's World and Austin Powers movies were all pretty successful. Yeah, he was pretty big in the nineties, and then you know mm-hmm. he did obviously he played Trek. Uh, yeah, so yeah, he, yeah. Oh yeah, that too. I, fuck me, I didn't even remember. Yeah, I mean, he's had a lot of good. You know, he's in Glorious Bastards. Uh, that that was right, after that, that this was film. After this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because he wasn't in movies for a while, and then he had that that small part in Glorious Bastards. But yeah, this movie really. I don't think he well, did I anything think, before Inglorious Bastards, did he? Like in between Love Guru and and Inglorious Bastards. Well I, mean, well, I mean, I think that was only like a year later, but like after that, there was a long gap. Oh, uh, from... yeah. Well, then there was a long gap. Yeah, but it's just like this movie like killed his career. Is the point? Uh, I'm yeah, yeah. Trying to, like, <laughs> or at least put a you know an end to it for a while. I, I, I mean, I he's done so, stuff yeah. since, but yeah, like this mm-hmm. is this is a bad movie for his career, and it's a bad movie for everyone's career. I was thinking. This might be the worst movie I've seen, like, like almost all these actors in. Like, certainly Ben Kingsley. Oh, yeah. Um, but, like, Justin Timberlake in this movie is fucking awful. He's supposed to play this French guy. I couldn't even tell yeah. he was supposed to be French if it were not for, like, the subtitles that said, like, he curses in French. Other than that, I'm like, oh, he's French? Well, it was, like, the captions, right? Because I don't yeah, think Yeah, it cusses subtitled. in French or whatever. He goes, like, boo, boo. and the joke yeah, is that he's got a big dick. Yeah, he's like Lecoq, whatever, like stupid yeah. name he has. The story's like fucking incomprehensible, but the story, it's like, there's this hockey team and um, Megan Good is going out with one of the hockey players. I don't Rami know, I don't Malco. know the, uh-huh, I don't know him so much, but. Well, he, he was like, in, um, this uh, side note, he was in uh, a few movies, but like 40 Year Old Virgin, a, a, you know, much okay. better movie that uses raunchy humor well, because it's more grounded and like it has a better setup, you know, with a nerdy guy who feels, you know, overwhelmed about, yeah. you know, dating and yeah. This is Which I, I haven't seen shit. that movie, but I'm sure it's better. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, we were going through, like, the suggested movies, because we watch this on Amazon. There's, like, the suggested and, like, I don't know, Longest Yard or that of Sandler, whatever. Like, I bet all those movies have funny moments, even if I don't sure. love them. This yeah, movie does not have great. one, like, funny fucking part at all. Like, not oh, really. But, no, I was explaining. So, so like, they're going out, Megan Good and, and him. He's a hockey player. And then there's another hockey player, Justin Timberlake. And he's yeah, got a big rival. dick, so so he steals Megan Good away, 
and mm -hmm. then the team starts to suck, I guess. So they bring yeah. in Michael Myers, Mike Myers, <laughs> not, they not the murderer. They should have brought in Michael Myers to kill all the characters. <laughs> but they bring him in, and he's the love guru. He's, you know, this, this fucking, you know, spiritual guru. Make the whole team do better. Make Bring everyone's spirit up. I'm like, well, okay, specifically the, the player. Yeah, like, like specifically he, him. player, yeah. Yeah, by, I don't know, making horses or making elephants fuck or like, th like oh, shit yeah. like that. It's just the like climax. by doing a bunch of shit that makes no <laughs> sense. And it's just like fucking horrible. Yeah. Well, like he's re recruited, you know, Mike, Mike, whatever the fuck. I, I, I'm yeah, I just read the character's name. I still forget. It's like Picnic. No, Picnic. Uh, <laughs> Pitka, oh. Pitka. Uh, he's uh, so obviously, yeah, the player, you know, Romney Malco, he's not playing as well. Should, so Jessica Alba, she's the owner of the team. I guess yeah, she inherited Jessica the Alba. team. It's the Maple Leafs that's the team. And, you know, she's <laughs> yeah, like. Which is a real team. <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah. Pretty, yeah, because yeah, Mike Myers is Canadian. I don't know if that was like a deliberate choice. Um, yeah. I and I think know. he I think he did play hockey, like, you know, maybe in his youth. But, uh, yeah, Jessica Alba, like, you know, the team's not doing well, so they all boo her. It's a really dumb, like, running yeah. thread. Like, why uh -huh. would they boo? Like, obviously, she, she's Jessica Alba. Like, I don't think they'd be booing her. <laughs> they'd yeah, probably yeah. like her. Um, so, anyway, <laughs> yeah, John Oliver's Mike Myers' manager. His, name, his character's name is Dick Pants. He's right behind you there. And he's like, you know. <laughs> John he, Oliver. <laughs> You know, they're going to pay um, you. Steve Colbert as well. There's a lot of those like... Um, Jim Gaffigan. Yeah. Daniel Tosh. Samantha B. I've heard this thing before. I think it was like related to SNL. Like they call it hat on a hat where like the joke, it's just like too complicated to be funny kind of. You know, sure. It's better off. Sometimes you're better off just keeping punchline simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like like you said, like, you know, there's another running thread about his characters on drugs. Like even if like the joke was funny to like in the first place, they, they, they fucking run in, it to the ground. There's another thing, too, because obviously they keep showing the hockey games like, you know, it's like the Maple Leafs and whatever team I, like Justin Tiblikes. I don't remember. But like the, their uh, like logos like keep like shooting each other like it's you know it's like a little cgi anime but yeah, like they yeah. keep r cutting back to it has nothing yeah. to do with anything so like why yeah. would it you know it's, it's not fun it's completely pointless they just threw that in <laughs> yeah like right. everything else you know uh -huh. yeah describe uh, ben kingsley's character <laughs> ben kingsley's character um so ben kingsley one of the greatest actors of, of all time he played gandhi one of the it's one of the most important, beast. probably the most shinless list. Yeah, 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 sure, but yeah, he played like the most important, like one of the most important people. You know, Gandhi, leader of you know the huge movement <laughs> or whatever. And now he's he's making a fucking ass out of himself in this movie. He's cross eyed, Pl playing a cross eyed fucking buffoon, farting and pissing, like every horrible joke, every crude nasty joke and it's just like wow this is fucking embarrassing to see him in this it's so fucking bad and he's, i guess uh, he's in it because yeah. it's like he wants to punch down at himself a bit because you know he's this respected actor so it's like yeah let me take on this role that's like something to prove that i could be funny as well right but this movie there are just, better like, examples of that right this <laughs> yeah. i'm sure you can name a million of them but this this movie did, did not did not fucking land like that character his scenes are just, like, probably the worst scenes in the movie. They're fucking horrible. Basically, it's, like, these flashback scenes to, like, the guru, Guru Pit, Pitka, Mike Myers, like, when he was a kid. And they Obviously, see, he's a white yeah. kid in India. Yeah, like, which yeah, makes, yeah. It's like a CGI They CG his face his onto face. a kid's butt, which looks really so strange. bad. Yeah. 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 And, again, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, it, it can be seen as being funny. Because it doesn't look good, but it's a comedy. But it's just like, no. It doesn't it, work. No, it doesn't work. Right. It's just like the best way to describe it. It doesn't work. Um, and yeah, it's just like, right. Why is this white guy in India? It's supposed to be absurd. But it's like the whole thing is just kind of offensive to Indian people. <laughs> and then there's um, the v Vern Troyer. Who, yeah. The, you know, it's just Passed like. Passed away. He was mm. funny as many me, but like I think you know, obviously Austin Powell, like that that had short jokes too. But like many me is like a weird character too. Yeah. Like, I think that makes him more interesting. Like he's you know he's like uh -huh. trying to bite the cat he's holding. But I yeah, think like ultimately, this, right? It's just is it funny? And this was not funny. The stuff with him. No, like it just feels like so mean spirited. Like you know, Pit, you know the guru keeps telling him, you know, because uh, Vern Troyer plays the you know the coach of the hockey team. Like all he does is like tell like short jokes to him. It just feels like so nasty. 
Yeah, like, well, it's like, <laughs> this, this scene, they go to his office or whatever, because he's the yeah. coach, and he has a, he has a little office. <laughs> it's a tiny, like, you know, right. it's kind of, it's like the, is it John Malkovich? The Being third, John Malkovich, yeah. Yeah, yeah the like third, fourth floor or whatever. 12 eight and, and a half or something? Yeah, eight and a half Seven floor. and a half. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like that, where he's like yeah. in this, like, half a too. floor. Mm-hmm. And you know John Oliver's in that scene. I would love to ask John Oliver, like if I, had, I'm like, do you remember <laughs> being in a movie where you were in a, a tiny office, <laughs> for like a, a little person, like a little person's tiny office? <laughs> I'm sure they all remember the love. Guru. I would just love to ask him that. Sir Ben what, what, Kingsley, yeah. Sir Ben, do you remember the scene where like you're telling these guys to like dump mops, dump mops in into buckets piss. of urine? Yeah, yeah and, and then, then slap each the other with it. Yeah, like, jokes like that, it doesn't work, like, they don't work because it's just gross for the sake of being gross. There's, like, no context for it. It's very lazy. Very lazy humor. It's all stuff like that. It's all, like, crude, gross-out humor. And and that's it. There's no variety to it. Um, Mm -hmm. The level of comedy is basically on the level of, like, those Jason Freeberg, Aaron Seltzer parodies. Like, epic movie, Mm -hmm. date movie, meets the Spartans, vampire stock. Like, this movie obviously has bigger stars in it, but it's, like, that level of, like, comedy. It's, like, so juvenile and and obnoxious. And you said this movie bombed? It made, like, $30 million. Dollars I, th- or, I think rel- maybe relative to expectations, but also it was sure. critically reviled. Yeah, and, yeah it's, it's, <laughs> deservedly. It's just so, <laughs> it's just so odd because you know Mike Myers he co-wrote this and like he did you know Wayne's World and you know Austin Powers like th- those movies like they don't have it's not really I mean there's some gross out stuff in Austin yeah. Powers but like it doesn't feel that's not it's just like a different vibe like. I think it worked, you know, because Austin Powers has a specific, you know, angle with the, you know, James Bond parody. I think that I, I, helps, yeah. yeah, keep things focused. D- definitely. I think Mike Myers is really talented, but he, mm-hmm. I think he really works well with some restraint. Yeah. Like you're saying. And this movie feels like very unrestrained. Like they just let him do whatever he wanted and it was just fucking horrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you mentioned Jessica Alba. She's fucking horrible in this movie. Her character, she's like barely, like she's not in it much like at certain I mean, she's point she's in it a little bit but like but there's yeah, a certain th- point she's like not in it for a while and i was like you're supposed to she? buy this romance between her character and pick it doesn't work at all because all he does yeah. is act like an ass because he's a know. weirdo yeah yeah it, again it's like is this is this supposed to be like an endearing kind of character where we like the audience falls in love with him like he's this outsider but you know you really grow to love him because he you know he's goofy but he's lovable or, or whatever but like that it's just so fucking bad like the character it's so yeah. bad. It's not like Borat or anything. No, like, or like you know. even something like uh, Naked Gun, like the Frank Drebin character. He's kind of endearing because, you know, he's he's so like deadpan. Yeah. I think, you know, but this character is like much more grating and, yeah, just like right. obnoxious. It's, it's, it's like, like everything's so amped up. Everyone else is like the straight man kind of. And then he's like the goofy one. But then all th- everything else is also really goofy. Like it just doesn't make sense. Yeah. Every, <laughs> it, everything's like so off key. realized. Yeah. Yeah, it's, Kanye yeah, West certain, is the. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, I just want to mention like the cameos. Kanye West yeah. makes the cameo. I don't know if you've ever seen yeah. the video of uh, oh, yeah, Michael yeah. Myers and Kanye West like he Katrina. Can't, he can't Michael Myers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he might, Mike Myers. But there's a video of Mike Myers and and Yay now. Um, oh, who gives a shit? He's an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they're like talking. I, I watched this video after watching the movie because I, I had to show Mike because <laughs> he's never yeah, seen. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, that that video is it's very funny. I just I, I enjoyed like their reuniting for this movie after that. I think video. there was another scene of that, but it got cut in the movie. Uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Kanye West is right, a fucking nut. But it's it's just another part of the movie that aged very poorly. There's like a lot of poorly aged jokes. Like I think there was like a Tom Cruise, Katie Holmes joke. Yeah, he's like bad. You know, it's like the joke is yeah. he set them up. Or there's a reference to like, yeah, like yeah, Brad like Pitt he's and there. Angelina Jolie, and mm-hmm. yeah, there's like certain he's like references. Like Britney Spears is, getting out of the car with like you know censored over her, whatever, and then they do the same thing. Yeah, with the roots. Yeah, they reference the electric oh, company and yeah. Oh, are, there are oh a lot of like God. bad jokes with um you know when it's not dick jokes is um you know they show <laughs> like the guru seminar. He has a lot of like weird acronyms e i e i o. It's just like, uh, like it, it just goes oh, on yeah. and on. Well, yeah, like all the previous gurus' names, like like Ben Kingsley's was like Guru Tuggin My Puda, or like Guru is Such a Big a Knob. Yeah, you know? f- like funny names like usually. That. 
I think like Arrested Development's like one of the few like movies or shows like that can pull off like funny names that are actually funny. But this one, yeah, it's just it's, it's so tiresome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Megan Good was yeah like wasted in the movie. I don't think she she barely talked. Yeah, she's just hanging out with uh, yeah. Justin Timberlake's French friend. Yeah, like there, there was also like another scene when <laughs> um, fucking you know. Horrible. A sequel, you know, whatever, because uh, they're ca- whatever his character and Megan Good's character, they, you know, they're a couple, and like the love guru shows up and try to, you know, break things. Out. He gets attacked by a killer rooster. Oh yeah, really what the fuck weird. was that? Why? And then like him and <laughs> Justin Timberlake have a fight, but it's really like awkwardly staged. You can just tell, like, you know, with bad movies, like you're more conscious of like you know bad blocking, bad editing. Like it's just so obvious. Like they're not. It was yeah. like you know. One, you know, one shot, one shot kind of thing. Like, the, uh-huh. you know, they weren't actually, like, reacting to each other. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. This movie's like a fever dream. I can't remember, like, any kind of... I remember things about it, but it's like a like a nightmare, you know? It's just, like, I don't r- know the order of anything or, like, yeah. <laughs> the context of it. It's just, like, a bunch of nonsense. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think if you, like, got together a group <laughs> of, like, filmmakers and and told them to like make the worst movie imaginable i don't think they could make a movie worse than this movie yeah it's so it, it's you know baffling fucking and horrible movie. it's like the worst movie i think i've ever talked about on the internet maybe one of the worst like that <laughs> i was telling you like on my channel and including at least the worst we've covered for the podcast probably yeah, yeah. like that this and that fantastic four movie josh trank like those two these yeah maybe, and maybe the love guru could have been, he could have been the villain it, it's just so painful <laughs> it's like fucking torture this movie and it's so short through. too it's only like an hour and 21 minutes but it minutes. feels like it's three hours long because <laughs> yeah. it just goes on and on and it has no point you know, and all, yeah, it's it's so no story thin too. Anything. Like yeah, like that, like the the setup, like we said about like the, you know he's helping the hockey play. Like that's the whole movie. Yeah, right. You know, you can it doesn't get... have a story. It has like a premise. Right. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, it, it would be tiresome as just like you know a thirty minute you know whatever sketch. But right. yeah, even as like a an movie, SNL it's, sketch. It's really Which, this you know, isn't like connected to SNL or anything, right? He just no, like, came up no, with this I bullshit. I don't think so. Yeah. Um, Wow. And I, I would have thought, you know, because Justin Timberlake's character is the goalie and, like, they keep joking, oh, he's got a huge dick. You know, he's like Dirk Diggler. Like, what, yeah. you know, you think there might be, like, a joke at the end of, like, a hockey puck, like, hitting him there. Or so. I, yeah, that's what I thought. Or, but like, yeah, he uses his dick to hit, hit a hockey puck. Yeah, or block it. Yeah. That would require, right, like, some amount of thought, <laughs> like, to put into the writing, which they did not do. No one put any thought into it's this. It's also... No, of course not. Yeah, it's also it's funny. Like, yeah, I'm not the first to point this out, but like a lot of like Justin Timberlake's movies are terrible. But he's been in like two five star gems, with, you <laughs> yeah, know, Social, Social Network. Network, Inside Lewin Davis. Yeah, he's entirely the, dependent on the director he's working with, basically. It's, yeah, they, the director they used of this well. movie, funny, he never directed anything. This is his Marco only credit. Snable? Yeah, is that this, is his, this yeah. is his only credit. Well, I mean, he worked. He's not quite like you know what's the high roller guy. Like that's like, but that's literally his only credit ever. Yeah, like, but I think as he a director, on, like, this is yeah, his right. Only he was film. like an AD on um, Meet the Parents. So, yeah, this is the only movie he's directed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, not good, not good. Did you like when they you know, uh, they did a Bollywood version of Steve Miller Band's The Joker at the end? Which what the fuck yeah. does that have to do with anything? Oh yeah, and, I'm a Joker. I'm a I'm toker. A midnight toker. Yeah, That's, I prefer the quesos, quesos, quesos. Or like in the mood for love. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's made for I prefer an interesting the, double feature. Yeah, the this movie, like you were saying, it's like 80 minutes or whatever. That's because like, again, there's there's like no stories, so you could just like cut out anything, and it's the, like they they definitely went like this is horrible. Make it as short like as fucking possible. And right. just like, like, cause we gotta release it, cause we spent all this money on it, but make it like as painless as fucking possible. You know, make it as short and quick, like, cause yeah, there's just like nothing. There's no meaning to anything in it. <laughs> you have a very <laughs> nihilistic a, view of the so movie. It's just like being fucking nasty. It's just a fucking horrible oh, yeah, this... waste of time. This movie. 
Yeah, it's not like one of those, you know, reviews like, oh, you know, certain things, you know, didn't yeah. turn out as well as they, no, it's just like this is a whole This disaster. is one of the worst movies, yeah, fucking ever. Horrible fucking movie. Uh, I was I'm reading totally, yeah. Oh, so oh. I was I was reading Roger Ebert's review and he saw <laughs> yeah, like obviously Mike Myers has made funny movies, but yeah, like, I'm sure he loved like it, it was, right? Ri- yeah, <laughs> so, like it was like r- line, you know, jokes written on bathroom walls by kids. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what it is. Consistently, it happens a few times because I made note of it. Like characters laughing at something the audience is not laughing at. That's a problem. You're not really. Yeah, you, sure. yeah that, that's a, definitely a rule you're not supposed to break. Uh huh. <laughs> it's like make the audience laugh. It's making them laugh. Come on, yeah, guys. It, it, it's supposed to be funny. Laugh. Yeah, because Mike, my he, yeah, he like consistently like laughs to himself, sort of like he did in the Cat in the Hat, which is also like a pretty bad movie. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. These SNL guys, when you just like let them loose without any creative restraint, they they just make like really bad stuff. Yeah, like yeah. No, nah, this movie's a big no. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like made for like people with, like a low IQ. You know, like that. Like mm-hmm. it's just like the editing is so quick. Like you don't even know what's like happening in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Like it just cuts between all this shit, and you're just like, what? Like what the fuck is happening? Like it it's so mm. bad. Yeah, I mean, how, how does it even it, it it opens like it just shows him at his like palace or whatever. He's like living yeah. in India, and, he, uh, and like, then they cut to like the hockey stuff, and then they cut to Justin Timberlake, and then they cut to the sports announcers, and you're just like, like already, you're like oh man, this is gonna be fucking bad. And also, like, the, the dialogue, when it's not, like, shoehorning in, in bad dick jokes, it's so <laughs> stilted. Like, it almost feels like the scenes are too short. Like, when Mike Myers, he goes to see Ronnie Malk, you know, he's, like, trying to, you know, hit the puck, but his hands are shaking. He's like, you can't help me with the, my love life. Like, that's, like, the first line he says to him. It's like, what? It's just like, what? Like, it's, you know, it's, <laughs> like, it feels like the scene's been, like, chopped down. Like, like the to- It probably you know, it has. Does, yeah, yeah, like yeah. I said, you know. Because so they probably just had like scenes. It's like with like the Ghostbusters movie or whatever, like Melissa McCarthy. They're, like they have yeah. scenes. They go there and then they just like improv a bunch for mm-hmm. like you know all fucking day if they have to. And they like take the best stuff. And this was the best <laughs> stuff. <laughs> right. This was the best of what they had, which was you know a bunch of dick jokes and Ben Kingsley yeah. farting and pissing into a bucket. Like that's like yeah. the level of writing like we're we're like talking about here. And and um do we get like comedies like this anymore? I was thinking about it. Like culturally insensitive. We get good stuff. comedies, you know, like bottoms yeah. and you know, whatever. Yeah, like. yeah. Asteroid City here. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's like what that. I mean. Like Bobby. I feel like yeah, people like I don't know, they like romanticize the past or movies to a certain extent. And we've definitely yeah. seen like a lot of that, like, oh movies suck now or whatever. But I feel like if a movie like this came out today, like the fucking Comedies. economy would like collapse. Like it's just so <laughs> fucking bad. Like, can you imagine paying to see this movie in like a theater? You'd be the, like, the, what the fuck am I watching? Like, holy shit. Yeah, you'd be thunderstruck. It's this embarrassing. is a funny joke. Yeah. I um when I I know we have mentioned riff tracks before. Like there was you know, they did a track for um the happening and there's like a scene where people are frantically driving away and one of the guys is like this is like you know, the audience <laughs> after five minutes of the love guru. <laughs> it's a great joke. <laughs> like this movie has that kind of status. This is worse than the happening. Yeah. yeah the happening's definitely. funnier than this movie. It is sure. funnier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I remember hell. more of the plot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A perf- a per- completely superfluous bottle of cough syrup. Right. Yeah. More yeah. quotable. More yeah, quotable, a, right? Yeah. It's hard to figure out, like, what, yeah, what the goal with this was. It was just, you know, like a, you know, kind of goofy to comedy. Laugh. But, yeah. And, the, you know, he, you know, the love guru, he keeps, like, singing. He's trying to, like, woo. Jessica Alba, he's singing more than words. He does his own rendition, which yeah. is like, I guess it's meant to be funny, but it's not. Like, he's, uh-huh. just, sing- he's just singing the song, basically. Mm-hmm. They do that Bollywood number. Like, yeah. I think they just, like, took some old Bollywood movie, probably, and, like, dubbed over it. It's like, what, there's, what, like, one part? scene in the movie. It's, like, oh, one okay. scene in the movie. They're, like, singing in, like, you know. 
Oh, is that, are you talking about the part where like he first sees Jessica Alba and he's like fantasizing about yeah. her? Is that that yeah. scene? Yeah. yeah, it's like a Bollywood parody. I know there's the one later where they do the Joker, you know, Steve Miller band song. I'm a Joker, I'm a smoker, I'm a Yeah. Pretty dumb. It was pretty it dumb. Might be, yeah, it was definitely like it was 2008. I mean, was this the worst movie that year? It might have been one of the worst <laughs> for sure. There wasn't. That, I think was there was like movie? you know, epic movie or something like that that year yeah. too. Like Meet the Spartans, I think was yeah, some shit like that. Uh, I could double yeah, check, but you know, I know I Tropic was Thunder was that year. That also has like kind of like absurd humor, but it's yeah, it's much more specific and yeah. Oh it's, yeah, you know, it works well as a parody of you know Hollywood and like mm-hmm. you know pretentious actors. Yeah, disaster movie was that year, right? So yeah, yeah, but like this is pretty much the same level. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> For people you'd expect better from. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That almost makes it worse, right? Because it's like, yeah, why are you in this? It's like a uh, movie forty three kind of. Sure. Like, a bunch of great actors. You're just like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Like Lowest common like, denominator. Yeah, like Hugh Jackman's got, like, a bull sack on his chin. <laughs> yeah, and it's not like, oh, you know, we're, mis- you know, Mr. Pre- you know, pretentious critics no. with our monocles. We like to laugh. It's just, you, you gotta know, be funny. So like, what the dumb. fuck's yeah. funny about this? It's it's making me, like, it made me upset. <laughs> yeah, it just, I'm it upset. Just, it, you're right. It just stays in that one gear the whole time. You know, even yeah, if you want right. to have like in, in, in immature jokes, like they can't. You know, you gotta have some variety. Yeah, there's no right. Like some yeah, of my like, favorite, not com- like some of the funniest movies I've seen aren't even necessarily comedies. Like I love Goodfellas and Pulp Fiction because there's the right. funny moments, but then they counterbalance it with like like violence and like horror. You know, these moments where you're like, oh shit, and it's like tense or whatever. But yeah, this yeah. is just like that's why I hate like comedies like this. It's just like right. It's so boring and like you don't care about like what's happening because everyone's like a cartoon character yeah yeah right it's too cartoonish and like great comedies can be derived from you know story like i love you know parasite like i was flipping watching that again and like there's a scene towards the i don't want to give it too much like a cop's like trying to give the guy like his miranda rights but he's the guy's like laugh, like see like he's laughing like he's not even listening to me like yeah that's that's a really funny scene yeah because it's very specific yeah, even in the mood for love, there he had, he had like his friend character who was like always yeah. drunk. He was coming home drunk or whatever. <laughs> like, like yeah, he's obsessed funny. with the woman. Like, oh, she's great looking. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, even dramas have funny parts because <laughs> yeah, it's levity. boring to be. You know, it's like Zack Snyder's problem. Like they're all they're they're yeah. one gear and like the other direction. They're just like monotonous because they're just like too self serious. <sighs> yeah. Like bass, like the whole fucking time. It's like not interesting. <laughs> you know. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. Very dark. Not the, uh, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not saying every movie needs like a pie in the face, but yeah, you got. Yeah, it helps yeah. to have moments of you know, um, yeah, comic relief in, in some form. It doesn't have to be like yeah, because yeah, this movie, like you said, it's too cartoon. It's so broad. Mm-hmm. So broad that it's, it doesn't hit any mark. <laughs> Yeah, there's a part where, like, he lifts up Vern Troy as, like, like he's holding an Oscar. Like, I'd like to thank the Academy. Like, it's so yeah. bad. Yeah, it's that's, just like bad. A, that's a bad fucking joke. It's just, yeah, that's, it's like, just a one fucking of the bad. whiff. They just make fun of people. Like, that's, yeah. like, the humor, which I fucking hate. Like, there's the joke when the elephants are having sex later at the hockey game. They cut to, like, mm-hmm. two fat people in the audience. Like, oh, Like, you know, they think it's <laughs> oh, cute. Like they're, cause, the like, like, they're the elephants, right? Like, that's, that's not funny. Yeah. Fuck, you know, like, like, they had to throw that in. Just yeah. for fuck you. That's why. Yeah, yeah. Uh, bad Santa kind of has like a mean sense of humor, but uh-huh. like the characters well, are like, great. It, um, Tony Cox, yeah, but he, like he's great in Bad oh, Santa. Yeah, yeah. He's really fucking funny in that movie because they go back and they you know they kind of they spar with each other. That makes it funnier. Yeah. 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 You know, he's like, he, I the, get, get. <laughs> his character is yeah. right. He's actually a character, and he has like some agency in the story as well. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's important. Um, but right, like the whole joke of like the, the, the little office. I can't get over that. Would <laughs> Would you like if you were an actor and you walked on the set and you're like, you're like you gotta perform that scene? You're like you gotta if you're like John Oliver, you gotta you know do that scene. Would you do it? Uh, or would you I be guess like fuck this shit? Paid. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, I guess mean, he, he, paid. John Oliver. He might have referenced it on a show at some point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's like uh, I was in the love. Gr- uh, you know, like that's embarrassing. Well, I was in the love, was in love. Girl. Yeah, he's what? probably said that at one point. <laughs> yeah, he, he's funny on Community. That was a better role for him. <laughs> yeah, 
everyone in this has been better in other things. Absolutely. It's the yeah. worst <laughs> movie, like, all these people have been... Like, even Justin Timberlake, Jessica Alba have been in some bad stuff, like Fantastic yeah. Four, whatever. That's a better movie than this. Yeah, now we're really... <laughs> yeah, it really... I, I have a soft spot for that Fantastic Four. Right, I, I do not, but that's fine. I have yeah. a soft spot for, like, uh, Shock Tale. Mm-hmm. Everyone has a soft spot for, yeah, certain things. It's 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 a bad movie, but it's your bad movie, right? Right. <laughs> like it, like it's you know you feel more protective of it than this like some other like sh- you know piece of crap like uh, you know whatever like those this. fantastic <laughs> beat like those fantastic <laughs> beast sequels we cover like those are fucking horrific like those I have are, <laughs> no affection for those at all those are completely mediocre right and, and like bad it, well, I'd argue worse, worse than, than mediocre that. yeah but this is just so um obnoxious. Yeah, in your face. Grading. Yeah. Like they're trying to like make a bad movie almost. Yeah. Um Yeah, bad comedies in particular are rough. Mhm. For sure. Cuz right, if it's a bad like the room is trying to be a drama and it's funny right. because it's like completely failing at what it's trying to do, which this is trying to be funny, it's failing, so you're just right in absolute fucking misery. <laughs> like yeah, this whole crap, film man. or worse, like actively like disgusted or like revolted by like what's happening yeah um, you're not feeling the love like, yeah yeah and yeah i don't know i i do like a good gross out joke if it's funny but yeah these but, yeah these are yeah. pretty dumb yeah i think the, the context is a big thing too mm-hmm. yeah i mean south park has a lot of gross out humor but like it's not like those aren't the only jokes that they tell it's you know a lot of, you know it could be like you know more dialogue yeah. based or yeah sillier stuff yeah, it's like layered and like satire and mm-hmm. irony, like a million, you know, because they're brilliant writers, right? <laughs> Whereas this yeah, is not right. brilliant. <laughs> yeah, this is a joke. Like, you know, in the, the episode that the, the boys are playing World of Warcraft and Carmen, he makes his mother like come down and like, you know, take his. Yeah, you know, they're like, all shitting in the like, buckets. Sh- yeah. Right, like the joke, yeah, you know, obviously it's so gross, but it's so funny. Like, they're so. He's such a fucking loser. Like, he can't even like, get up to <laughs> yeah, go to the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah, they're, and then they're all shitting. Like, then they're all fat, right? Yeah, they got, yeah, they're covered with acne. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, like the difference is that's funny and this isn't right. funny. <laughs> right. And and yeah. Remember he had like the Indian sidekick in the movie, which he had some like, you know, horrible name or whatever. But like it's yeah. like <laughs> like that's like the only Indian person in the movie. <laughs> it's like about gurus. Yeah. Well, I mean Ben Kingsley's and then, like, of you know, um Indian yeah. descent. Yeah. Ben Kingsley, yeah. Yeah, he's like half Indian or he's like uh Something like that, like Middle Eastern maybe, but like he's like Something half like British. That, yeah. yeah, I looked at I looked this up yesterday. Yeah, his mom is his mom is English, <laughs> and right. his dad I think his father is was like, Indian. Yeah, <laughs> his uh, you know his character description on Wikipedia, like he's you know tugging my put whatever the fuck. Uh, yeah, he's severely <laughs> he, he's severely cross-eyed due to excessive masturbation. Which is really stupid. They they do show like a bunch of celebrities in the Love Guru. It's like you know Jessica Simpson, like Val Kilmer, like it's it's completely yeah, yeah. random. <laughs> and um, at one point, um, you know they're trying to distract Justin Timberlake because he's like French Canadian. Like oh Celine Dion's on stage, but obviously it was not really Celine Dion. You think they would make a joke of it? Like oh it's like a double, but like they just shoot it from really far away, so the joke doesn't land. Yeah, it yeah. just looks awkward. Like, oh, like we're trying to hide the fact it's somebody else. His his dad was Indian, but he was born in Kenya, so that, that's what I looked okay. up. So he sure. was born in Kenya, but yeah, he's Indian. So yeah, he's half Indian, half. Well, it makes sense why he played Gandhi. I think I say it's, it makes sense why he plays Tug and my. Well, yeah, I, well, it I, makes I actually, sense why he plays Guru Tug and my Puda or whatever the fuck. I actually saying. haven't seen Gandhi. I got to see that. It's funny how I, I've, I've seen this movie, yeah. but I haven't yeah, seen Gandhi. It's a good uh, precursor to a. <laughs> right, exactly. No, you should see Gandhi. It's a good movie. Yeah. Yeah, he played like one of the most important Indian people ever to live, and then he was in this fucking piece of shit. <laughs> I yep, can't he, get over that. Peed With in a, the bucket. a little office and. Yeah, piss jokes. Okay. And then he was in the, the Henry Sugar short. That was much funnier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's the, yeah. Uh, he, yeah, he's the guy who you could cover his eyes and... Right, he had the bandages mm-hmm. around his head. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's like me watching this movie. Cover my eyes. <laughs> In my ears, yeah. In my ears. Hide, hide yourself away. <laughs> yeah. Too bad that wouldn't work for that guy. Yeah. He would still put on the love guru. Be like, can you still see it? Yes. Maybe uh, the love guru should have ended with um, Mike Myers. Like he, he goes, he finds this wall or you know, he buries a secret in there. He hides a secret, uh, the secret of his chastity belt. That would have yeah. been a brilliant conclusion. Yeah, we even mentioned the chastity belt joke. Yeah, he keeps he, like hitting it. Like You he, he said you so. saw that in the trailer or whatever. I remember seeing the trailer for this. I don't know what. It, maybe it was in front of Tropic Thunder. I don't remember. Yeah, but, I, mean, uh, I think it came out around well, the same time. It was like August, I think. Or something like that. It's June. Uh, so maybe it was for something else. Oh, but so yeah. yeah. Okay, I so because I think Tropic Thunder was later. Yeah. It was, yeah. So it must have been for something else. But yeah, I do remember that. I didn't get it as a kid, the, the boner joke. But yeah, it's, it's not that funny now that I get it. <laughs> in front of Indiana Jones 4. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Something like that. In front of Iron Man. <laughs> yeah. I, I have a good familiarity with those that summer movies. Yeah, It's like too. one of my favorite movie summers, like ever i went to the movies like every week yeah that's wally like, the dark knight yeah some that's good how stuff. it fucking should be <laughs> yeah, know, you know, yeah you know here and there there could be now. some good even like last year with the, you know oppenheimer and yeah mission impossible as long as uh, you know good movies like that here yeah and there. yeah yeah but that that 2008 was crazy that year we got you know i know they weren't all great but they were all like anticipated you got like, iron man indiana jones yeah. dark knight Kung Fu Panda. Kung Fu Panda. That was better they, than I expected. Was it time, w- yeah. Wally? What was Wally? Yeah, yeah Wally, Wally. You know, good fucking. You know, there was a lot of good movies there. <laughs> I think there's some other stuff too. I think yeah, you know, there's a couple other things not as good, but like I went every week. I saw the Mummy Four, whatever the fuck I didn't, that I didn't was. See that one, three. Mummy Three. M- yeah, M- Mummy Two, the Dragon Emperor. <laughs> yeah, and you know Hancock with Will Smith. Yeah, yeah, I remember seeing that. Yeah. yeah. The it was a big Hellboy 2. Yeah, Hellboy, Hellboy 2. That was, yeah, yeah, that I saw. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, quite a few things to see. That's when, like, yeah, that, probably, like, the biggest, probably most important year for superhero movies with Iron Man and the Dark Knight. I mean, that, that was really changed yeah, the game. Yeah, those are, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, that was a big summer. Those made the most money, too. Mm-hmm. It was cool. Like, you know, Iron Man came out. Yeah. Everyone was like, wow. And then Dark Knight came out. I was like, wow. Wow. Because, like, Dark Knight's wow. even better than Iron Man, you know? Yeah. Like, that's a hard act to follow, and they did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I did not see the Love Guru when it came out. <laughs> it's a bit it's of a, a love bit of a busy like, summer. Yeah. It would make you say it would wow you in a different way. Like wow, yeah. that was horrible. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fucking Hor- horrendous. Horrid. <laughs> horrid. Was uh, this rated R? Maybe that's why. Uh, it might be PG thirteen, which is also. I, I, th- I think so. I think it's, it's just like a bunch of dumb like poopy yeah, jokes. I, like I think juvenile. I think they say the f word at some point. Um, when he was getting attacked by the rooster, but yeah, it's like like completely, yeah, that's you know, it's another reason. It feels like so toothless. Like it's a PG thirteen movie about a love guru. You know what I mean? <laughs> like they they can only tell so many jokes. <laughs> um. So what would you rate this? this is a solid five um, star, right? <laughs> oh yeah, you can. I mean, it's you know, yeah. I, I you know, people were complaining that the Dark Knight wasn't nominated for best picture. I mean, this was you know sitting right there. Uh, no, yeah. yeah, very easy half star. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's no Ghoulies four. No, no Ghoulies no. four. I must say, that, but that doesn't have elephants banging on an ice rink. <laughs> yeah, yeah, half star for me as well. Yep. Yeah, we're in agreement. Fucking horrible. <laughs> but, but not even. Please not check even, out. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Just, just <laughs> miserable movie. Just absolutely horrible, miserable movie. It's like late. It, 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 they should have called this late miserable. It's referring yeah. to the audience. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But yeah, check out In the Mood for Love if you haven't already. <laughs> <laughs> check out The Love Guru. <laughs> <laughs> check out The Love Guru. Check it out or, when you can. Watch better Mike Myers movies like Wayne's World or yeah, Austin Powers. Yeah, those are actually funny. <laughs> do, do, so this is from yeah, Commercial Rub 9240. Do you guys believe that comedy movies are underappreciated in the realm of the Oscars? I believe there are a lot of good comedic per- performances that deserve more recognition. Seems to me that they're that the only films winning Oscars are more serious films. Not to say serious films are bad, but it would be a nice change if comedy movies were better represented by the Oscars. And this kind of, this is from seven months ago, and you know, poor things got a lot of attention. 
Mm-hmm. And that's a yeah. comedy, to be fair. Although that's very artsy comedy. Sure. Uh, Bobby got, you know, nominations. That, uh, that yeah, as well. I agree. I feel the Oscars are not just comedies. They're way too pinned down to, like, certain genres, like drama, right. biopic, which, I, you know, I comp- we've complained about that a lot. Like, we just hate that. Not inherently. Like, a, no, there could no. be good biopics, but it's, like, become, like, the term Oscar bait exists for that reason because there's just like yeah. you know people feel entitled to like oscars or awards because they cover an important subject matter when the important thing is have you made a good film and have you made a film mm. that engages an audience and and has emotions that you know are real <laughs> like and comedy films do have that sometimes more than the shit that gets oscars um mm. and you know we've seen that with other genres too like lord of the rings like getting like an Oscar, but that's rare, right? Like action yeah, movies yeah. don't get attention like that, and horror, horror movies, movies don't get attention. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that's true. Yeah, it, it, even if yeah, right. I, I agree. The Oscars can yeah can get kind of you know myopic in terms of like the movies they cover. I mean, you know, they could even if they wanted to pick like certain things, but like, yeah, at least like watch more than like, you know, four movies, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, cause sometimes, yeah, comedies can get short shrift. I think um, even something, you know, at the time it wasn't like super embraced, but like the big Lebowski, I think that like, you know, that became like a cult hit, but like, I think it, it was, the, you know, the Coen brothers, it was their fall off to Fargo and people, it was like a little less like accessible, but yeah, we, you look at like Jeff Bridges and John Goodman, they were doing, you know, great, great, great performances of that. And that, yeah, yeah, they didn't really get much attention. I'm sure there exactly. are other examples like back to future. I mean, it's more than just a comedy. Obviously it's like sci-fi and, but yeah, mm-hmm. I think even that, like that, you know, that, that, that should have been nominated for best picture. Oh, yeah. I think definitely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there might be other examples. Yeah. You know, the, you know, the, I think they have been, more like you said, more recently they've been embracing yeah, like poor things and Bobby, like stuff like that. Like those are yeah. definitely comedies. Or I could think of like you know Mad Max Fury Road that got like attention. Mm-hmm. That's like an action movie, you know. Yeah, not, like your standard Oscar movie. But those things yeah. are kind of rare. I think you know with biopic, it's helpful to have like a specific angle on the story. So, uh, yeah, we. I think we've talked. I don't want to repeat myself because I know mm. I think we've covered this before, but. uh yeah, yeah, we just want. Yeah, I know. I know. Maestro was just nominated. Yeah, people like that, which is fine. It's just like, yeah, it's it. It, it just felt like too much, like like Oscar bait to me. Mike Myers, he was in Bohemian Rhapsody. That was one of his more recent ones, part of his comeback. Yeah, and then he uh, moved to Haddonfield, Illinois. And he was in where... Amsterdam, another movie we <laughs> covered, which wasn't very. Good. Oh yeah, he was in that. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was Amsterdam. also fucking awful. Not as bad as Love Guru, but still pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we did cover Amsterdam. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was fucking bad. Oof. <laughs> That's like another one where like, it's like the worst of all their careers. Like Anya Taylor-Joy, Rami Malek, all of them. Right. Yeah. And I, I worked on it for two days and then COVID happened. So maybe, I'm not happy COVID happened, but like, um, yeah, maybe it was yeah, for the best. Good, I didn't get thing. my name it, on it. It was for the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you could have been in the. I could have been in the Love Guru. Actually, I didn't tell you. But, really? Yeah, I could have been in it, but then something came up. Why? When we were ten? <laughs> yeah, they when they needed someone to play uh, the the younger version of the the Mike Myers kid. You know, when it could they, have been a body double. Yeah, yeah, I could have been the body double there. We're all set, everybody. I think we did yeah, a good just, job today. Yeah, and uh, I'm proud spread of everybody. The love. Yeah, spread the love, Guru.